everybody and welcome back to Forza Horizon 3. I'm here with another uh, Rainforest Sprint. Uh, I have the new Acura NSX here today with a lovely Punisher skin on it. I'm Anybody who doesn't know I'm a huge Punisher fan. I was looking through and I saw a race skin and I was like, yeah, I usually go for race skins. I'll probably go for that one and then I saw this one and I was like, I have to have this one. Anyways, yeah. Uh, gonna be building this car up to the top of S1 class. Uh, we don't have a whole lot of room to build this car up, so I'm not exactly sure what I want to go for. I'm definitely not swapping the engine. Uh, drivetrain has to remain standard, which is all-wheel drive, so that'll be nice. We'll have some nice grip and pa uh, grip through the corners and actually be able to shoot out the other side relatively easily. At least that's the hope. Uh, this car does come in the Alpine Stars uh, pack, the DLC that came out not too long ago. So yeah, if you want to drive this car, then you have to have that pack. That shoots the PI quite a lot. Um, I'm thinking we're probably not going to have too many issues with grip. This older NSX is are relatively good handling cars and it's all-wheel drive it has 305s to start with I am gonna put the tire widths on I don't know if I'm actually going to be able to get okay so I can still get the race compound on um, let's see what else can I get on I can definitely put the diff on uh, it's relatively heavy I'd like to get some weight out of it but I doubt we're gonna get any weight out of it for the 4 PI through weight reduction but we'll give it a shot and we could get a hundred pounds out of it, that's not too bad. Uh, the car is going to be slightly awkward to build up where we don't have much room. I don't know what I want to go for. I can't upgrade the brakes. Um, I'm thinking I might actually end up going for power. How much weight does the exhaust take off? The exhaust takes off quite a fair amount, but I can't actually fit it all on. Uh, it's almost a balancing act of what bits can I put on to try and make the most of the car. Because it has uh, 573 horsepower from standard, so it's a decent amount of power. So I don't need a whole lot more power. I would like to take the weight out. That would give us 587. You know what? I may just go and put on the weight reduction. Uh, that stage, get 100 pounds out of it and still have a PI to mess around with. For that PI, I should actually be able to put those on no problem. Uh, could actually stick that level of springs on and still fit in the class. I could put that on too. Uh, I think we'll go with sport suspension just so I have that little bit extra PI to play around with. Not that that's going to make a huge amount of difference but we'll see if I can sneak on a exhaust to take a little bit more weight and add some power I wonder sometimes these do knock PI down they don't um, stick on one flywheel upgrade and then we'll just take a sneak and see if I can fit a clutch or gearbox or anything on Those are all going to add just a little bit PI so we can Add anything else on. That's the Acura NSX built up. Uh, not a very intense build. Where it starts off halfway through S class, er, S class, S1 class, it was never likely to get a whole lot of power, or extra power from it. But I'm thinking this car should do relatively well. It is on the heavier side, so it may struggle for acceleration. I'm not sure. Uh, but that four-wheel drive will be nice to give us that extra power delivery through the corners. Mm-hmm. 
car isn't bad from the NSX considering this is almost a 4,000 pound car that we're throwing down here. I didn't actually realize this car had 7 years. I wonder if, I'm not actually sure if it's just 7 or if it's more. Uh, but yeah, this feels like a relatively good car. I can carry lots of speed through there. That corner, I slowed down, but once I turned down, it was flat out through. So plenty of grip through the car, which is... I was expecting that because, like I said, older models of the Honda NSX, they were all very good handling cars. You can make them very fast and very good handling. I did touch the brakes a little bit while I was turning in, which kind of dragged the car off and I tapped that barrier on the inside, but we didn't lose too much time from that. Just a little bit of a dumb mistake for me. Now, hopefully this car has the weight that it doesn't unload the suspension over some of these crests, like we have seen from many a car. Uh, one that comes to mind is the Ford Crown Vic, I know I talked about it in the last episode, but it is a point where a lot of cars were struggling, because you just couldn't carry the speed over these crests. The SX doesn't seem to have that problem, that is an amazing corner when you get it right 140 miles an hour around it. This car just has such phenomenal levels of grip. This and the Corvette both have such phenomenal levels of grip. This tops the Corvette though. The Corvette, you still have to be careful coming out of the corners. If you put on the power a little bit too much, then you could have issues. This car, you can just throw it through the corner, and once you get around through the other side, you can just boot it, which some, a lot of these corners are actually being flat out. There are some that I break into, but going around them is just flat. I'm going to have a lift there. If not, I'm going to end up very wide. I actually ended up a little bit wide, and then it put me in shape there. So I'm going to have to slow down a bit more through there. I have a little bit too much confidence going into there. But yeah, some of these corners are very close together. So if you're out of position for one, it will put you immediately out of position for the next one or two corners, which you may lose a tiny bit of time on one corner, but being in a position for the next two or three, that's where you're going to lose a lot of time. Handle that change there well. Now this is the point where a lot of cars struggle because they can't get the power down out of this corner without sliding all over the place. And it is... Was there just a horn? Did I hear that right? I could have swore as we crossed the line I heard a horn, but, oh yes, in the last video where the wrong rival time showed up, I didn't actually change it this time because I'm a complete and utter idiot, but the Pontiac's time was a 3.05.1, uh, so yes, the Corvette didn't go into first place. Corvette is sitting in second, but now it is actually sitting in third place, the NSX, with being sideways through a corner and bumping a wall. Uh, set a time of a 305.619, which is exactly a tenth of a second quicker than the Corvette. I think that we could have a very good chance at beating the, the, the Pan Am? No, the Pontiac Trans Am. All right, we're back to take the NSX for its second run down the Rainforest Grand Sprint. Uh, yeah, basically the story of this lap is going to be don't put it in a wall like I did last time. That corner is claimed, well I shouldn't say claimed, but that corner has caused issues for many a car. You just, if you get on the brakes at the wrong point, I think it's the camera in the corner will start to carry the car through the corner. And that's not what you want because then it can carry you out wide or in really uh, tight. And in either one, you're going to end up in a wall, which is not ideal. You can lose some momentum and time in doing that. This car is just so lovely. It has so much grip. You can just chuck it into these corners and just have full confidence that you're going to not go out backwards, basically. Uh, also, if my audio sounds slightly different or lower or higher, I did have a bit of a mess around with some of my audio settings. Uh, so yeah, if my audio is off, just, yeah, that's why. 
Wait, so it's going up this little hill here. Yeah, the NSX doesn't have any problems with unloading this data. Like in English. It doesn't have any problems un with unloading the suspension like we have seen from cars. The Corvette didn't have that problem either. I'm not sure if it's because they're more... I don't want to say more track ready, but they're more race designed compared to some of the other cars that we've driven. Um, or if it's just the fact that both of them are that little bit heavier, I think it might be that they are actually both just heavy enough that they don't get lifted up as much going over these crests. The brakes on this NSX are also phenomenal. I thought it was going to be in trouble. I thought I'd break actually a little bit too late, but I got slowed down way quicker than I was expecting. So yeah, this car is its amazing. The brakes are phenomenal. It has amazing acceleration. Considering it doesn't have that much power, it's over 500 horsepower, but it's also almost 4,000 pounds. That's quite a feat saying that this car has good acceleration with that power to weight ratio. Come on, let's slow it down. We get driven a little bit wide, but I kind of want to be out wide from this corner. That way I can take a nice line to there. I ran a little bit over the grass, but it's fine. You didn't lose any time doing that. That's the kind of line I would be taking from the corner. I did take a bit too much speed through it, though. Being out wide for the second corner there is really what you want to be doing because then it gives you a nice line to the front and carries as much speed as you possibly dare. Up through these final last corners, now I am a little bit, uh, in a little bit too far and we'll chuck it to the line and it is going to be quick. We have a new leader. The, I almost said Honda NSX, not quite the Acura NSX beats out the Trans Am by, what's that, about seven tenths of a second, six and a half tenths of a second, something like that, like that, so yeah, 304.4 is pretty good, uh, I'm not sure how I'm really going to improve on that, that was a pretty solid run, but I did run wide at a couple places, so we'll take it around for its last run down the sprint circuit to see if we can beat its time with a 304.4. Alright, so we're going to take the NSX for its last run down the Rainforest Sprint. Uh, like I said, I'm not sure where we're going to improve. I did get on the brakes early a couple spots. Just a few little things, nothing major that... I think I can improve on because this car it's so easy to drive it's hard to make massive mistakes with it so I don't think we're going to see this car going like three seconds or two seconds faster on this run I don't think that will happen it's always possible but I honestly don't think it will happen we may I think the most probable thing is that we're gonna go around the same time we're gonna get another 304 we may go slightly quicker, we may go slightly slower, but this car is so balanced that I don't see any major points where I can improve. Like, there are some cars that you have to make the most of their straight line speed and take it cautiously through the corner. That's not one of these cars. You accelerate out of the corners like mad and then carry mad speed through the corner. I didn't have to break there, I probably didn't have like small lifts, that's a little bit of a mistake on my part. Check it through this, and we round the top of the hill and start going down. As much speed as I dare to there, oh, that was close. I'm just trying to carry as much speed because it's already gone to the top of the boards. I do want it to go faster if at all possible, but I am going to push the car as much as I dare through this course now to try and get the best time I can out of it and I almost put the wall. Oh, we got quite unhappy over that bump. I don't know if I just turned at a wrong point and got unhappy or what that was, but we almost got spat outside of that would have been this run over. Probably did cost us a tiny bit of time, but it could have been much worse. I thought we were actually going to lose the car and go for a spin. Luckily we didn't, and this run is still alive. Let's slow down these corners. 
slightly to the left here as you get drug out wide by some understeer. And that's the thing, you can get drug out wide by understeer, but then you have to make sure to get slowed down like I did in there. Because if you get drug out wide, then you're in a position for the next two corners, which isn't good, plus you've already been drug out wide on that corner, so you're really in a position in like three different corners which can cost you quite a bit of time, but if you get slowed down and run it in just right, you can carry tremendous amounts of speed through there. And now we're coming on to the final corner here, and we're gonna bump the wall. That's all right. And we're gonna cross the line. If I wouldn't have bumped that wall, we may have actually gone quicker. Uh, it's slightly down on our last run that was just because I made a couple mistakes there like that last corner I tried to carry a bit too much speed uh, but anyways the NSX goes to the top of the table beating out the Trans Am with a time of a 304.451 it's not a massive uh, victory for the NSX it's still quite a considerable one, considering it's over a second faster than the Corvette and two seconds faster than the BAC Mono, and both of those cars were tremendous cars down this course, but the NSX just had that acceleration and speed, or acceleration and handling, I should say, acceleration and speed are kind of, well, no, they're not really the same thing, but the NSX just was an overall amazing car really good car drive. I really recommend it to you if you just want a really balanced car just to have a lot of fun with. But that is going to be it for this video guys. If you like the video hit the like button and be sure to subscribe and until next time goodbye.